going to talk about PolarDB in general. PolarDB is a database architecture for the, for, for, for the cloud. Um, I'm still I stand up. Let me start now. Um, I used to work for Oracle MySQL, now I work for Alibaba Cloud, where we uh, uh, provide different databases for, for, uh, for users in the cloud. You, you can use MySQL, you can use MariaDB, you can use Postgres, you can use uh, SQL Server, and so on. And also NoSQL. So, uh, but we want to uh, build a database architecture that take advantage of the cloud. Uh, when you are in the cloud, you can um, uh, use special uh, hardware because we are controlling the machines, for example. We can uh, use all the infrastructure in the cloud to take advantage of that and uh, uh, support users in different ways with the auto scaling and auto configurations and things like that. Uh, the basic principle of uh, many of these cloud-based uh, databases, you have also you have uh, Amazon has Aurora, uh, Microsoft Azure has uh, Hyperscale, and so on. Is that they they, they split uh, uh, the compute from the storage uh, because when you have the, you want to scale these separately. Uh, if you have uh, uh, if you have, um, if you need more storage, you want to add more storage. You don't necessarily need to add more com uh, uh, CPUs to comp uh, compute. Or if you need more processing, why should you necessarily add a full machine with more storage and so on? Uh, so uh, this is the basic components of uh, this polar DB uh, architecture. So, so we have a proxy that uh, 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 load balancing and handles failure and stuff like that to the database. The database has a, a, a special file system that hides the uh, distributed uh, storage system. And uh, so to the database, it looks like it, uh, it's uh, using a local storage. But actually, it's using a special optimized for database storage, that which is called uh, Polar Store. And the Polar Store, we're starting from the bottom. Polar Store is, as I said, it's a, it's a distributed storage. And it has multiple uh, champs with, uh, uh, with, uh, where the data is stored. Uh, all these terms are synchronized using parallel graph, which is a special uh, 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 variant of the raft uh, protocol that this has been developed uh, as part of this project. Uh, and all the databases, as I said, they talk to uh, uh, uses a special AI that uh, uses this underlying storage. Uh, and this storage has. Uh, uh, to, to, to be efficient, they do special uh, RDMA network, which is a way to, uh, where, in, where you actually, the remote memory looks like local memory uh, in a way to the computer. So it's, uh, this needs special hardware to get both uh, uh, low latency and high throughput. Uh, you have both obtained this and uh, SSDs in these uh, chip servers. So the obtain uh, gives you very uh, low latency. At the same time, you can store and get a high throughput from the SSDs. And there is some all the logic to coordinate this uh, within the uh, storage. So that we need, that this uh, special harvest is used means that uh, you need to have support in your, our data centers for this. Uh, Architecture. In the beginning, it was only some data center in China that supported this. Now, Hong Kong also supports this, and it soon will also be the data center in Singapore will actually be able to run this, uh, to have this uh, uh, harbor and uh, run Polar DB. As I said, there is a special library in the uh, on the on the database side that is used to communicate with the Polar Store, and it's. Uh, 
you mentioned pure user space, so it has less overhead and, uh, than traditionally traditional file systems. Uh, and, but it also has processing strength, and it's easy to port your database to this architecture. Or easy, or easy, it's supposed to porting at least. Uh, as I said, uh, one of the goals here is to be able to scale uh, storage and compute uh, independently. If you have a traditional MySQL system, then you, for, for uh, enough to get better to get to scale up uh, or to support uh, higher availability, you would have multiple replicas in addition to the master. And for each replica, you will add local storage. Uh, uh, but in here, you have this sh a shared storage, so that when you add a replica, you only add compute uh, resources, while the storage is still the same. So you can see that uh, the cost savings when you need many replicas gets uh, high compared to using uh, a lot of uh, servers with local storage. If you look at the, uh, the replication is also uh, uh, in PolarDB is physical compared to the logical replication that you're used to for MySQL. So in, in, uh, in MySQL, if you have logical replication, then you will, uh, you will have the bin log, which is the one that is actually sent to the place. Uh, and you will, but you will also write the read log, which is the physical log that is used to keep the data consistent. So if, if, if this uh, computer cache, for example, you will need a read log to recover into a consistent state. So, uh, but in the, uh, in the product, for example, you just have the data and the read log. Uh, and the slave get the read log, data and the read log from the, the shared storage. So you get uh, uh, you get a much less writing to disk than you get in the, the traditional MySQL application case, where you have to force both the bin log and the reader log. This is uh, also an advantage, special advantage uh, for uh, dictionary operations. If you have uh, in traditional logical application, if you uh, for example, add an, uh, you want to add a column or some other order table operations. You, it will first run on the ma uh, on the master, and then the operation is completed and it is logged to the bin log. So that's the time when it will be replicated to the uh, uh, to the slave, and then the slave has to uh, execute this uh, operation. And while this execute uh, the, the dictionary change is executing on the slave. The rest, the log behind it will be blocked. You will not do anything more on this table until it completes. Uh, but since we are using shared storage here, it's the, only the master that actually updates the data files. And then the data files are, are up, uh, are, are, are the operation is completed, and you just update some metadata, and then the slave is ready to use the same. Uh, same uh, version of the table. So, so, so uh, you say that by using physical application, you 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 uh, avoid the latency issues if you have a traditional application. And uh, that is to say, for the, this, this slide, the example use add column. Add column is instant in MySQL 8.0. So, so, but there are other uh, 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 table operations that uh, have this still have this characteristic. Uh, also. Uh, we currently, PolarDB is 5.6 uh, based, uh, but we are working on porting it to 8.0. So we'll uh, so probably release later this year. Uh, some other details here. Um, <coughs> uh, with the traditional uh, uh, InnoDB execution uh, over in MySQL, uh, you have a set of transactions 
And this transaction needs to be flushed to the reader log before you can commit the uh, report back to the client that this uh, transaction has been committed. To do that, this efficiently, you use group commits. So you group transaction together and you do one write and then you can report multiple transactions as completed at the same time instead of one write per transaction. Uh, in uh, in uh, uh, ParaDB, as I said, we share the reader log. And this slave will uh, pass the reader log, and then it will uh, hash on uh, the page ID and put it uh, divided between different workers. Uh, so that there are multiple workers that apply this reader log. And that is very necessary because on the, on the server side, there is multiple uh, threads actually updating the database. So if you use a single thread on this side, you will uh, have uh, problems keeping up. And uh, we know from uh, MySQL application that was the situation until they added some uh, 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 parallelization. And what they can do today is that you can, uh, as long as a transaction was in that, uh, the same group commit, you know that they are not dependent on each other, so you can actually do that in parallel. But once you get to, uh, uh, but, but a, a transaction from the next, next group commit cannot be executed before all the others before has completed in order to ensure that they are, uh, are uh, uh, executed in the right order. But here we can have a much lower, a higher granularity of parallelism because as long as it's not on the same page, you can execute it in parallel. Uh, I know that uh, the only reader log that is actually read on uh, here is the one for pages that are in the buffer pool or are cached. Because we don't want to read other, we don't want to read in pages just to read the log. Uh, because uh, the time we will need actually need this page, it might already have been flushed to this by the master. So you don't, you, you can save the work of both of them applying the log on the, uh, on, on the page. So, uh, but what happens if you read uh, what we call a page from the past? Uh, we say that the state of, of this slave um, replica is the, uh, the last log record applied to this uh, uh, page, to this, uh, to this replica. So if we then read a, a, a page in from disk, which has an older, uh, older state, we actually have to be find the reader log that has been cached here and apply that before you actually allow the uh, application to read this page. Um, we also need, uh, but that means that it's been piled up with the reader log on the, on the replica of not applied because the page is not in cache. Uh, uh, and so we need some way to garbage collect this log so that uh, uh, the primary will send the checkpoint LSN, and that is the log sequence number for the reader log record that it has. Before that, all have been flushed to disk. That it was checkpointing due. It flushed to disk every page that is uh, up to a certain time, uh, point in time. So when it com so the primary communi communicate this to all the uh, replicas, so it can garbage collect the old uh, reader log. Uh, MySQL is using, or InnoDB is using multi-version concurrency control. So there will be cases where like it, uh, uh, you need to read an old version of a page. To read the old version of a page, you use the undo log, which is a logical log that you read and then you revert your changes till you get back to the old version. Uh, in order to um, uh, be able to do that on the replica, you make, m must make sure that the uh, master does not purge to the read log that you might need. So all the replicas will tell the master what is the oldest read view that I will support. Make sure not to delete undo log records that are newer than this. Uh, this communication is not is, is done on the network. This is not shared uh, communication. It, it's not a, a, a something that is inherent in physical replication. It is the shared storage that 
makes it important to do this because the, what the primary do with its storage affects the replicas. So what happens if you read a page from the future? I mean, you have applied T4 and then you read something from disk where T5 has already been applied. Uh, and the answer is that uh, we do, you never will do that. We will prevent that because uh, the reader log and the physical reader log, there's no way of going back to an old physical version of a page. You have to distinguish the logical version of the page that you use for multi-version concurrency control for the actually the tree structures that this reader log is uh, reflecting. So we make sure by telling the, uh, the, the primary what is the uh, uh, snapshot that we are currently on, that it does not flush any pages that are new other than this to disk. So that's actually a change we had to do in ODB to hold back flushing until the uh, uh, read uh, to the replicas has uh, applied the reader log. But note not that the replicas are applying reader log all the time, so there is, there is usually not any uh, issues with the delaying this uh, like this. Okay, getting uh, uh, so there's only one, a single master supported currently. Uh, so uh, the proxy will then split and send the leads to the master and the uh, and the writes to the master and the leads to the replica, and it will load balancing between the real replicas uh, and, and, and things like that. And should the master go down, it will make sure to reboot uh, request to the new master, which will be chosen from one of these replicas. And you also uh, support that if you have a, 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 an application which first updates something, commit and then select that it actually sees its own uh, updates. Because when you do the update, you return to the proxy the uh, log sequence number uh, at that time on this. And then when the read is sent, the, the variable applicant is informed about this log sequence number so that it makes sure to apply enough reader log to be able to return a, 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 a version of this row that is consistent with what the update uh, originally they performed. Uh, but in the future, uh, what we are working on now is to support multiple masters so you can actually scale your updates beyond what one master is able to uh, support. And you also uh, will be able to use multiple availability zones for, for uh, your database service. So that's all. We have some questions. How conflict detection happens for multi-master replicas? Okay, so uh, uh, I don't have an answer to that. Uh, I I did not I I, I do not count the work on uh, that part, and uh, this was actually not me who was going to present this. But uh, so 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 I, I don't really know much about the future uh, plans and how the uh, the uh, conflict detection will be performed. 